Protesters arrived as early as 7 a.m. and have conducted themselves cordially and friendly, trying to organize peacefully as they did yesterday. They even extended cordiality to the police and have been holding speeches, you know, just speaking to the issues. Up until a few moments ago, we saw thugs almost hijack this protest. I say thugs because they were clear about their intent. They told me specifically, and also told some newsmen, pressmen like yourself here, and a presswoman, that one day they are going to behead them for the role they play in covering the agitations of citizens. And it is unfortunate that the policemen and women stood looking at these guys majestically walk past us into the same space they want us to get inside the peace park. They want us to get into a space that has basically been taken over by talks. It was so shocking that we even saw them placating talks, telling them not to be angry. Our demands are simple. We want the government to reverse all anti-people policies it has taken so far, pre-May 29. The, re the removal of first subsidy has done nothing but to reduce the lives of citizens to nothing. It has affected all sectors of the economy. We want things as simple as basic education, free water for all. The minimum wage has just been passed to 70,000, but we say that it is a pittance, it is a poverty wage, considering the inflation in this country. 70,000 cannot buy anything in the markets. Government has to have, con have, to have, con have to have conscience. They have to also show solidarity with the common people. When you ask people to tighten their belt, you should also tighten your belt at the top. Don't tell us why we cry that you are enjoying, you are eating. Why young Nigerians are crying? Why young Nigerians are going under? Don't tell us that you are eating. Why our farmlands are overrun by bandits, we can no longer see food. Don't tell us that you are eating. Why the Niger Delta? The environment of the Niger Delta has been so polluted and damaged that people can no longer use their farmlands. People can no longer drink their water. And yet you can afford to sit at the same table with international oil companies and negotiate their exits. Who are, they leaving the, who are they leaving the pollution for? Who is going to remedy the environment? As I speak to you, some areas in Niger Delta have fire burning on the ocean, or burning on their rivers for, for the past three years. Nobody has quenched the fire in Ondo State. The Ororo one fire, nobody has quenched it. And this fire has served to kill all the fishes in the river. People can no longer fish because of pollution. This country is for all of us. It's unfair that the people who received free education in their own time, from government, from a government during that time that was conscious enough to provide free education, to provide free water, are telling us that they can no longer afford to give us those basic things. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that rather than provide grants to students, they are providing loans that people cannot pay not infiltrate your ranks to cause chaos here. We have seen responsible Nigerians here, and we know that you are here working in line with the Constitution, working in line with the law, and we will give you protection. Be rest assured that we will not hurt you. We are brothers, we are friends, we are your fathers, we are your brothers. That is true. Please, please, let us maintain peace. I will tell you, let us maintain peace. We are Nigerians. We should love this country. And we should do everything possible to ensure that there is peace and unity in Nigeria. I have no regret being a Nigerian. So please, let us maintain peace.
the commissioner of police you requested to see would have been here. He will come here and he will address you. He's on his way, but on his behalf, I'm addressing you to tell you that we are here to provide peace and security. To ensure that to ensure that you are safe here. And we will not. When issues came up there, I stood there and I ensured the issue was corrected. We resolved it. I am a peacemaker. And uh, so all my colleagues here were here for that purpose. Find it in your heart to believe that we're here for you. Trust us that we're here to give you security. So long as you are working in line with the law, you have not gone or you have not done anything outside the law. So we're here to protect you and ensure that the peace you are maintaining now, ensure that you continue to protest in this manner until we're able to address you again by my of police as you requested. But for now, be rest assured that we are with you. God bless you all. God bless you all. And again, and again, again, concerning the issue of yesterday, people know that where we handled issues here maturely, there was no infraction. There was no breakdown of law and order here yesterday. For whatever that must have happened anywhere in Lagos, please call me. The issues will be looked into expeditiously. We will look into those issues, please. Um, when I know the current reality well, of Nigerians, yeah, they are, the living condition is unbearable at the moment. Yeah. I think that is the primary reason why Nigerians are outside here. Yeah. Of course, um, an angry man is an angry man. Yeah. Nigerians are dissatisfied with the feelings of um, Bola Tinubu administration so far. 14 months plus now. And things are not getting better. That's, that's why I repeated um, assurance from him that uh, Nigerians should be rest assured. But for how long? And um, not to suggest that um, he's ready to address this issue. And this is the reason why uh, Nigerians are outside here. Yeah. Fine, it's, it is not convenient for Nigerians to come out to protest, of course, but this is the only way they feel they can demand accountability and hold the government to account. It's about Nigeria, we don't have any other country. So, so um, a reasonable government should be able to, shouldn't wait till the end of this uh, expression of uh, the 10 days uh, protest to accede to the demands of people. And these demands are reasonable enough, of course. Some can be immediate, some, we cannot um, implement it immediately, like the call for the new constitution. Of course, you know that uh, we can't get a new fresh constitution in a day. It's a process. Of course, we've had fifth, uh, fifth alteration since the next 99 or so. And we, we keep saying that removing this one, editing it, bringing another one is obviously. Why not? Let's call for a fresh document that Nigerians can sit down with. A, 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 a document that will unify Nigeria, that will give equal opportunities to the citizens also, that will ensure that our natural resources work for our advantage. As you see now, we still have West Casting in Nigeria here yeah, and being a um, seventh oil producing country in um, oil producing country in the world. It shouldn't be. None of our refineries work. We are still bringing um well so these are the issues where why we are primarily outside. This is something we have waited for too long. In fact, every Nigerian have been protesting in our various ways. The market women, you keep them, you keep on seeing them complaining high price of goods and all that but the government have not heard us we just have to come out to the streets that is the reason why we are here we have been protesting we have been protesting especially in the issue of fuel before now my car i used like ten thousand to fill my tank but today i use forty five thousand to fill my fuel tank that i've been using for ten thousand to fill you can imagine there is no increment in salary there is nothing that is moving. So most of the time you end up parking the car. So it's something that is, it, we have long overdue for protests. Yes, nothing is working. Nothing is absolutely working in Nigeria. Nothing. Is it the full stuff you want to talk about? Yeah. I have three kids in the university. Before now, I give them 20,000 monthly for feeding. But as today, I give them 70,000 each. Look at the eye. Nothing has been added to my salary. Nothing has been added to my husband's salary. So for the three of them, instead of giving them 60,000 feeding 
for a month. That is how much at 70 per child. You can just imagine. So we are just managing, managing, managing. But when you push a man to the wall, the man just have to react. We are, we are, we can't even enter the wall. We can't enter. So that is why we are here. It will last. <laughs> it will last because we have suffered enough. If we have suffered all these years, it will last. What may, what will make it not last? Anybody that wants to hijack this protest, we will not allow them. We are not going to allow anybody to hijack this protest. It is a peaceful protest. It is legal. It is constitutional for us to protest. It is. It is our fundamental human rights as provided for in the constitution. And that is what we are doing. We are not destroying properties. It's our properties. We want to destroy any property that belongs to the Federal Republic of Nigeria because it's our own. We will not allow anybody to destroy any property. Never will we allow anybody to turn the protest to riot. It is a peaceful protest. It is not riot. We have failed them. We have failed the youth. So I think it's, we should be remorseful enough to, to align with them and try to see what we can do to back them up. This is not a protest. I mean, we have millions of people at home who are not out, but they are dying of hunger. A lot of people cannot express themselves for the fear of being killed, maimed by the government. We are protesting. Government is sending people to disrupt protests. I'm not a lawyer, but I know there's freedom of expression in our constitution. How can a court wake up one, one morning and tell us that we have to be in a cage protesting? That's no protest. That's no protest. That is simply telling us to follow the command of a group of men who has chosen to make the people suffer. It's not right. Uh, and I think it will be wise for Tinumbu and his group to toe the path of honor and um, do their best to alleviate this hardship they have brought. They brought this level of hardship on Nigerians. That bravado, as I speak, first subsidy is gone. I mean, it's crazy. He had no plan in place. To soften the, to cushion the effect of what, of the madness he was bringing into 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 the polity. I mean, for crying out loud, people cannot afford common staples anymore. I think Nigeria people should wake up. This is not a protest. I'm telling you, on the streets, by virtue of Lagos population, we should have nothing less than 10 million people marching on the street. If the police see 10 million people on the streets, they will park aside. It's the youth that you have here. Where are the old men and women? They sit at home, afraid of dying. When they are dying, people cannot, they cannot afford to pay expenses of general hospital, not to talk of private hospital. Go to the general hospital. It's a, it's an eyesore, it's a pity. You will find people laid on the floor before being attended to. I mean, my brother, the, 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 the thing now is the people has to be made conscious of their right to life and proper living. We are not living properly. Okay, for me, I think that the legal implication is First, I must state, as a minister in the Temple of Justice, that I do not agree with the judgment of that court. But I'm restrained, and I have no option than to still abide by it. Because if I do not abide by it, it means that we are enshrining and enthroning the rule of uh, the, the, we are going against the rule of nature. So, I do not agree with that decision because of two postulations that I made in my head. 
because of this judgment, I cannot stand in front of my house as a Lagos State indigenous citizen to protest. So that's number one. Number two is that, imagine the court has established, the courts have established historically that Nigerians have a right to protest pursuant to sections 39, 40, and 41 of our constitution. So if the whole of Lagos, more than 22 million people, now decide that they want to protest today, by the judgment of this honorable court, are they supposed to fit into just these two venues that have been provided? So these are questions that, by way of number, doesn't make sense to me. By way of number and sheer size of these two venues do not make sense to me. But again, there may be reasons why the Attorney General of Lagos State decided to sue Azan Soweto and a number of persons, and including persons unknown, including to, to be able to capture everybody in order to restrict them from being able to protest in any other place. So there are reasons is very, very well maybe known to them. I want to believe that it is in good faith, but we must ensure that as lawyers, we fight these orders of the honorable court to the highest courts possible. And I'm almost very, very sure that the outcome will fall on the side of the right of the average Nigerian to be able to protest in any place where they have lawful access to, because I can't go to protest inside another person's property. The law of trespass prevents me from being able to do that. So I pray and I hope that this court order is not left unattended. It is followed to the hilt. And I know that the Supreme Court of Nigeria, just like it, it, it gave a decision in favor of Muhammadu Buhari, in the case of IGP against AMPP in year 2003, when Femi Falano went to defend his rights to protest without getting a police license, I'm very, very sure that the Supreme Court of Nigeria will restate that position of the law and it will expand it for every Nigerian to actually be able to protest the any way that they want so long as it is lawful. Okay, the update so far, especially from the Lagos end of the protest is that um, the protest has been extremely peaceful, very, very peaceful. Um, we've conducted ourselves in one of the most organized manner. Uh, we didn't allow even provocations from suspected agent provocateur to derail us. Um, we commend the Nigerian people male, female, young, old, who came out despite all the threats, despite the intimidation, despite the court's judgment that the regime, you know, extracted on the eve of the protest, confining us to two parks, the park here and the park in K2, despite everything, including the use of the traditional horror to scare people people still came out and peacefully expressed their displeasure at the uh, policies of the Bola Ahmed Tinobu regime. So for me, from the Lagos end, it has been generally peaceful and successful. We knew that the protests that we embarked on yesterday really pained a lot of individuals, especially some vested interest. Some of them had already promised the states that they will ensure that the protest did not hold. So we knew very well that today they will mobilize in order to justify their pay. So peacefully that we gathered here, we already told the police that we continue from where we started yesterday and it was going to be extremely peaceful. When we saw some of them from afar, we reported to the police you know that you have a duty to protect us over here. These individuals, we suspect that they will come over to this place to come and scatter 
the protest. So when they eventually came over, we went live onto the press to inform the whole world that see, just as we have started peacefully, it is the government through their sponsored talks that are about disrupting the pro protest. If anything happens here, you should hold the Nigerian police and the Nigerian government responsible. So when we held our ground, they had to leave. So they just left now. And as you can see, we have continued with our program. Our demands remain the same. One, reversal of the removal of petrol subsidy. Two, the reversal of the policy to float the Naira. Three, reversal of the increase in electricity tariff. Four, reversal of all the increased fees in all our universities, polytechnics, monotechnics, colleges of education, and all other institutions of learning. Our, our demand still remains fixing of the Nigerian refineries. Nigeria is the only country in the world, only oil producing country in the world that depends 100% on importation for its local consumption. Even Angola, that we fought for their independence, that got independence just few, you know, few decades ago, are producing some of their locally consumed fuel by themselves. Why Nigeria? So these are some of, the, some of our demands that we want the government to listen to. Nigerians are very hungry and they are very angry. So that is the, that is, those, are our, those are our demands. Pro-government protesters are here to attack us and nothing has been done. They have not been arrested. I want it to be in the full clear of the world that the Nigerian police Nigeria police yes. is becoming complacent yes. in discharging their concern yes. of yes. or protecting lives. Yes. So when this yes. turns to violence, yes. you should hold the Nigerian police yes. and yes. the Commissioner of Police of Lagos yes. responsible yes. for whatever that happens here. Yes. Because we are not going to live here. Yes. We are going to die here. Yes. 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 We can't be intimidated. Fought the military dictatorship. Yes, yes, yes. We cannot yes, afford to go in the yes, similar dictatorship. Yes, yes. We fought the military. We cannot allow the Tenebu and his FBC government yes. to intimidate us, to cow us from discharging our concerns of the military. Yes, yes, yes. The Nigerian police, the Commissioner of Police should be held accountable. They should be held responsible. If anything happens, governors. I would like to invite Commander Abu to make this. Hello, hello, sir. They should tell you to leave the place. If they want us to be there, they should leave the place. We are here today to peacefully protest. Peacefully protest our rights. To protest is an inalienable right. We do not even need government to grant us that right. We don't need the police, we don't need the army to grant us those rights. They are inalienable rights. And for the past 24 hours, we have been extremely peaceful. There has not been any intimidation, no provocation, no iota of violence. And the police has a duty to provide security yes. for these protests. Yes. And we told them we are here armed with our banners and placards yes, alone. Yes, yes, yes. 
Why will you now allow hired dogs to come and intimidate us? We have always told them that protests generally are peaceful. It is only when the state, either through their forces, that is the police, the army, the SSS, or through their hired dogs, intervene in the protest that turns protests to violence. Nigeria belongs to all of us. We do not want Nigeria to burn. Yes. We want peace. Yes. What we are asking for yes. is that the anti-people policies that have turned our people to beggars on the road should be reversed. We want a reversal of the pump price of petroleum product increase. Yes. We want a complete reversal immediately. Yes. immediately. Yes. President Bala Ahmed Tunubu should hear this and hear this clearly. Very well. Nigerians are tired. Nigerians are hungry. Yes. Nigerians are angry. Yes. Another demand of ours is the reversal of the electricity tariff. Yes. yes. And prepare meter to be given to us. Prepared meter should be given to all households yes. in Nigeria, across Nigeria. Yes. You cannot be billing people for electricity that they did not use. Yes. We want reversal of electricity tariff increase. Complete reversal of it. Third, the floating of the Naira. The Naira that they floated. There is no where in the world where a national currency is left in the hands of the forces of demand and supply. No. Not even in the US. Not even no. in the USD. No. 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 So, on the basis of this, we said that that's their policy of floating the Naira is injurious for the mass majority of Nigerians and to the Nigerian economy. Yes. The official exchange rate has moved from below 500 Naira Mm. For about 1,600 naira. Yeah. But this, we say no. no. We want a reversal. Reversa. Reversa. Number four, the tertiary institutions yes. across Nigeria, all over, from UI to Obafemi Awolowo University, yes. to Uni Lori, to University of Lagos, to Unical, and all polytechnics. And colleges of education and all monotechnics. Over. All over. Yeah. Polytechnic as well. And polytechnics as well. Yes. We say that the right to education is a fundamental right. Yeah. And Nigeria is rich enough yes. to fund public, well, good quality education. Yes. And so this their fraud called student loan. We say complete no, no. to student loan. No. 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 We want a reversal of all the increased fees in all our higher institutions. So, I will conclude by saying that we cannot be intimidated. We fought the military to a standstill. The democracy that all of them are enjoying today yes. was won on our blood, yes. on our limbs, yes. our legs that we lost. Yes. So, Ibala Ahmed Chinobu thinks that he has all the money to bribe everybody. He cannot intimidate us. Yes. We have that right and we will definitely stand on our right. Yes. I went over the mic to Comrade Chuan. Who is the Shayaolu? Who is the national coordinator 